New data from NASA's Stereo, SOHO, and GOES-19 shows that the object rapidly brightened and it shifted to a color bluer than the sun itself. 3. I-Atlas just broke the rules of gravity, before its discovery even made the news. Before its name was spoken by any astronomer, it had already done something no law of physics could explain. It shifted its orbit against gravity, and in the spectra from NASA and the Keck Observatory, something stranger appeared. Nickel where there should be dust, metal where there should be ice, a Manhattan-sized visitor bleeding an alloy known only to human industry, in the deep vacuum between Mars and the Sun, a place where no factories exist, no air, no sound, and yet, something out there is doing metallurgy in the dark. At first, the object looked ordinary, an interstellar body slicing through our solar system, the third confirmed visitor from beyond. They called it 3i Atlas, third interstellar, after Taumuamua and Borisov, not born here, not captured by the sun's gravity, an outsider, every telescope that tracked it expected a predictable story, a frozen wanderer that warms as it nears the sun, sheds ice and gas, and grows a long, glowing tail that arcs gracefully away from the heat. That's how comets behave. That's how physics behaves. Until now, in late July, Hubble pointed its gaze toward 3i Atlas. What it captured didn't make sense. No tail, no drifting veil of dust. Instead, there was a focused jet, a dense, concentrated stream of expelled material firing straight toward the sun, not away from it. Toward it, the analysis was immediate and unsettling. This was not a gentle plume of vapor. It was a heavy, high-density jet, ejecting over 330 pounds of material every second. The readings were consistent across multiple observatories. Carbon dioxide, water, trace cyanide, and nickel. But no iron. That was the first alarm bell. In every comet ever studied, nickel and iron are twins, forged together in the cores of dying stars. They condense side by side, travel side by side, evaporate side by side. The ratio is universal. Every natural body follows it. But 3i Atlas doesn't. It breaks that rule cleanly, surgically. Nickel without iron, as if it's been refined. At the Keck II Observatory in Hawaii, the readings confirmed it beyond doubt. Four grams of nickel vapor every second. No detectable iron trace. It was steady, precise, and consistent over multiple nights. And that consistency is what caught everyone off guard. Natural objects don't act like that. They flare, they sputter, they decay. They don't maintain a constant rate of metallic loss. Then Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb said what everyone else refused to. He told the New York Post that the data matched nickel tetracarbonyl, a compound that exists only in human metallurgy, a chemical used in refining, coating, and aerospace applications. It's volatile, toxic, and completely artificial. It forms only under controlled pressure and temperature. You don't find it in nature. You build it. On Earth, it's used to transport nickel in vapor form, so it can later be deposited as a thin metallic layer on machinery or spacecraft. To see it leaking from an interstellar object was like watching smoke rise from a machine that's still running. Loeb didn't use the word manufactured. He didn't have to. He said, no natural comet on record has ever produced this. And that single sentence changed everything. But the mystery wasn't just chemical, it was geometric. Because while the jet was expelling material sunward, 3i Atlas was also resisting the sun's pull. Instead of drifting naturally through gravity's curve, it adjusted, subtly, deliberately, tiny shifts in its orbit, measured in micro arc seconds, appeared in data from the minor planet center, barely noticeable, but consistent. Something was interfering with its own motion. NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter caught a rare opportunity in early October as the object passed within 12 million miles of Mars. Using its high-rise camera, it captured several frames of 3i Atlas, the first time a working spacecraft had ever imaged an interstellar visitor up close. The data is still being analyzed, but early reports describe a compact body surrounded by a collimated jet coherent enough to look almost like propulsion. Normally, comets behave like leaky kettles, vents open, material bursts out randomly, and the object wobbles from the recoil. 3i Atlas didn't wobble, 
Its emissions pulsed rhythmically, like a machine managing thrust cycles. Its path remained eerily smooth. No random torque, no chaotic spin. It was balanced, and the chemical trail it left behind, nickel without iron, hints at something even stranger. Nickel tetracarbonyl decomposes when exposed to sunlight, leaving behind pure nickel and carbon dioxide. That's not just coincidence, it's a feedback system. Under radiation, the compound breaks apart, the nickel replates the surface, and the carbon dioxide escapes. That process creates a reflective metallic coating, regulating temperature. On Earth, we call that passive thermal control, a method used in spacecraft to keep them from overheating. But 3i Atlas is doing it naturally, or deliberately. If true, it means the object is forging itself as it travels. Each gram of expelled material becomes part of its armor. The brighter it gets, the cooler it stays. The cooler it stays, the longer it survives. A perfect, self-sustaining equilibrium. A machine disguised as a comet. As it neared the sun, its brightness didn't fade. It grew. Its reflectivity increased even as it moved outward. The opposite of what comets do. Most comets flare near perihelion, then dim as they drift away. 3i Atlas defied that pattern entirely. Its albedo climbed steadily, suggesting its surface was transforming. When researchers modeled the process, the only match was metallic recoding, a body plating itself in reflective nickel under solar heat. In the lab, nickel tetracarbonyl decomposes at 180 degrees C. In space near the sun, it would decompose continuously. That means the object could be sustaining a metal vapor loop, a cycle of plating and shedding that keeps its temperature steady while reinforcing its shell. No known natural process does that, but every engineer understands it. That's why Loeb's comet hits so hard. He recognized the pattern not as chemistry, but as design. By October, the object's behavior had forced NASA, ESA, and JAXA to re-examine every telemetry model. The solar wind should have pushed its emissions away. Instead, 3i Atlas seemed to bend that wind around itself, curving magnetic particles like an invisible shield. That's not a plume, that's interaction. In early November, when JWST turned its instruments toward it, the near-infrared spectrograph confirmed the Keck readings. Strong nickel lines, faint cyanide traces, and no measurable iron. It also found something even more haunting. Absorption bands consistent with engineered alloys, metallic bonds structured in lattice patterns rather than random crystalline noise. If that data holds up under peer review, it means we are not just observing chemistry, we are observing manufacture. Even more unnerving, the light curve analysis from observatories across the globe shows a pulse every nine hours precise, repeating, unwavering. It could be rotation, or it could be rhythm. Nature loves chaos, technology loves symmetry, and 3i Atlas shines in perfect time. If it's natural, then we've discovered a new class of self-regulating, metallic comet, something that builds itself to survive its own journey. If it's not natural, then it's older than anything we've built, and smarter than anything we've imagined. Because think about what that means, an interstellar object entering our solar system, shedding engineered metal, maintaining balance, reflecting radiation, correcting its own motion, all while obeying a rhythm that no random process can reproduce. It's quiet, it's patient, and it's still here. Every telescope trained on it reports the same thing. 3i Atlas refuses to behave like debris. It acts like a system, and systems serve a purpose. We've long said that nature doesn't build machines. But what if nature was taught? What if what we're seeing isn't alien at all? but ancient, a relic still operating, still maintaining itself, waiting for something we don't yet understand. In science, there's a rule. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and yet the evidence is already here, in spectra, in motion, in light. Nickel without iron, jets firing toward the sun, a mirror forged from heat, an object adjusting itself, as if it remembers how to move. No one at NASA will call it artificial, not yet. But behind closed doors, the language is changing. They don't call it a comet anymore. They call it the geometry of defiance, a body that refuses to follow the forces that should control it. The question isn't what it's made of. The question is why it's still running. 
because if 3i Atlas is doing what the data says separating elements, recoding its surface, stabilizing its orbit, reflecting energy, then somewhere, sometime, someone designed it to last. And if it can last, it can return. For now, we watch, we measure, we whisper, and in every observatory where its light still flickers, one truth lingers louder than all the rest. Something out there remembers how to build, and it's building still.